Hi, in this video we will introduce the Hoffman's inventory retracement bar and we're going to see how to automate its detection in Python. If you are interested in the code, there's a link in the description where you can download the Jupyter Notebook file that I have used for this video. So the first rule is to detect the trend of the price, checking if the 20MA slope makes a 45 degrees with the horizontal line. Of course, the 20MA is given just as a starting example. You may as well try different periods for this moving average. And if this is the horizontal reference line, we need this particular angle to be greater than 45 degrees. If you are chasing a downtrend, the negative slope would make also an angle of at least 45 degrees, with the horizontal line as well. And if you already know this strategy and believe in this 45 degrees myth, I have to remain skeptical on this and I am going to show you why it's impossible to define this angle on a trading chart when we will plot this indicator in Python. I know it might sound mean towards fellow YouTubers publishing this indicator, but looking for the 45 degrees angle on a variable axis scale is mathematically meaningless, but there will be a solution brought by algorithmic trading, so bear with me, we will check this out in a while. As for the second rule in this strategy, we're going to search for the candles where the tail is at least 45% of the complete length of the candle. This is a typical example where the upper tail is greater than 45% of the whole movement of the candle. We can as well consider the same shape in the opposite direction where the lower tail is greater than 45% of the whole candle's volume. Typically, we will be looking for this particular shape in the case of an uptrend and for the second shape in a downtrend. The psychology behind is that we're looking for moments where the sellers on the market are trying to step in to stop the uptrend or where the buyers are stepping in to slow or revert a downtrend. In other words, if you see this shape while going on an uptrend, it means that part of the sellers are stepping in to resist. In the opposite case where we have a downtrend, the buyers are stepping in the market and they are resisting this downtrend. So as you can see, there's a wealth of information that can be brought by candle patterns. And from here, we can define our custom strategy once we understand what is going on on the market. In this example, we can identify these different candles. And the idea is to wait until the market breaks above these high values because here we have an uptrend and sellers tried to revert the market. So when a candle will close above the high of this Hoffman's candle, it means that the sellers couldn't actually resist to the buying trend and buyers still have the upper hand and the trend will most likely continue in an upward direction. So if we know this and we have this information, we can step in with the buyers with a long position. And here, if we look what happens after these assumptions, we can see that in most of the cases, the price will follow our expectations. At least this is the idea behind the Hoffman candles. But there's only one way to find out what would be the long-term outcome of this indicator, and it's by carrying out a backtest using our Python code. I want to keep this video as short as possible, so here we will only explain how to detect the Hoffman candles and generate a signal when we have one. And in another video, we will use this indicator in a full trading strategy, carrying out a proper backtest. So we can start by downloading our data using the Y Finance module. I'm importing Y Finance as YF, and my data frame will be equal to yf.download function. I'm downloading the uh, Euro US dollar data for 59 days period, the 15 minutes time frame. So anyway, we are limited if we are using a short time frame to a period less than 60 days. For those who would like to have more data, you can always download these in batches of 60 days and then concatenate and assemble your data frames into one big data frame. And obviously, if you are interested in other currencies like the Bitcoin, US dollar or something else, you may as well download these. It's very easy using the Y Finance module. So once our data is downloaded, I'm checking my data frame. So it's loaded and we have all our data. And now we can just reset the index. If you want to keep the index of the date time, you can just keep it as well, skip this line. But for this example, it's easier to use an integer value index like 0, 1, 2, up to the number of lines or the number of rows we have in this data frame. Then we can compute the exponential moving average, which I'm going to add as a new column into our data frame using the pandas underscore technical analysis package. So it's the pandas underscore TA as TA. And then I'm using the EMA function, providing the closing prices for the candles. 
and then the length is equal to 20 you may as well change this to 30 or 35 or whatever value that fits your strategy then i'm going to compute the slope of the moving average and for this we have to consider the number of points of the moving average to be taken into account for example i'm taking 20 moving average values and i'm going to compute the approximate slope taking into account these 20 previous candles the slope values are calculated and stored into a new column into our data frame which i'm calling slope ema so i'm just verifying here if we have our new columns added into our data frame which is the case we can continue and start computing our signal first of all i'm creating a new list that is initialized to zero values of the same length of our data frame that would contain our signal. Then I'm defining a new variable called slope limit. And this is very important because this is what will be replacing the 45 degrees angle with the horizontal. In other words, this is more like the tangent of the angle instead of using simply the angle itself. So it might be changed. The uh, limit might be changed according to which data frame we are going to use. So it's not going to be 45 degrees for all the time frames. And this is something I'm going to show you why just in a while. Another variable is the percent limit, which is 0.45. And this is the tail percentage of the total volume of the candle. It is kept on purpose as a variable so we can experiment on it. Maybe we are putting 0.5 or 0.35 or 35% tails for the candles. Then for each row, if the slope of the current candle is less than minus the slope limit in other words if we have a negative slope exceeding the slope limit variable so we are in a downtrend and we are exceeding a certain angle limit at the same time we have this particular hoffman candle pattern so if the um, difference between the minimum part of the candle meaning the lower part of the body of the candle between the open and the closing price and the lowest low of the candle this difference meaning the lower tail all of this is to define the low tail of the candle divided by the high minus the low meaning the whole range of the candle is greater than the percentage limit so if this ratio is greater than 0.45 then we have a hoffman candle in a downtrend and our total signal is equal to one for this particular candle so in other words we have just detected in a downtrend a hoffman candle in the opposite direction if the slope is positive and it's greater than slope limit value the threshold of our slope and at the same time we have a um, hoffman candle but in the opposite direction meaning the highest high of the candle minus the uh, high value of the body of the candle divided by the whole range of the candle meaning the high minus the low value of the candle is greater than the percent limit then we have a hoffman candle in an uptrend and in this case our total signal is equal to two for this particular row or for this particular candle when we have computed the signal and stored the results in this list which is called tot signal for all the rows all the candles we're going to add these into our data frame as a new column called tot signal and at this point we can visualize our signals on a graph this part we have used previously in previous videos in brief we are defining a new function called point positions for each x value we're going to check if the uh, total signal is equal to one meaning if we are in a downtrend and we have a hoffman candle in which case we are positioning a new point just above the high of the current candle in the opposite case if we are in an uptrend we are positioning a point just below the current low of the current candle and i'm going to add these positions into a new data frame column called point positions so i'm applying this particular function as a lambda function for each row meaning for each candle this way we have positions of the signal points for each of the hoffman candles on our graph then i'm using the plot lie graph underscore objects and i'm going to plot part of the data frame let's say a data frame slice between index 800 up to 1000 we're plotting the open high low close 
prices of each candle and it's a candlestick pattern so we're going to have candlesticks on our graph so here we are adding the um, exponential moving average in orange the width is equal to one and the name of the legend is equal to ema and here we are adding the scatter points or the uh, signal position points that we have just computed in the previous cell and if we run this part we can get our 800 up to 1000 index candles plotted in this way and we can see the uh, purple points showing the signals where we have Hoffman candles. So the first thing I would like to mention is these 45 degrees myth angles or whatever. As you can see this is something way beyond 45 degrees. I mean measuring this with the horizontal is something around 80 degrees or 70 degrees but if we zoom in we notice that the angle is decreasing so now i am just below 45 degrees maybe around 45 degrees or so on so visually what i'm trying to tell you is that you can't say we have a 45 degrees angle or a 50 degrees angle or whatever degrees angle because the angle you are going to perceive your the angle you are going to see in front of you you are going to estimate visually will largely depend on the time frame you are using and on the scale of your x-axis and the y-axis. If we change either the y-axis scale or the x-axis scale, this angle is going to change. And this is why I kept it as a variable. I prefer to use the slope in this case. Remember, we use the slope limit here. This way, we keep this parameter open for experimentation. We don't fix um, 45 degrees or whatever threshold we are going to use because it is going to depend on the time frame and on many other parameters. The second thing we can notice is that we can check some of the candles. This is true. It's a Hoffman candle. We have an uptrend and by the Hoffman strategy, every time we have a break or a candle closes above these high values in this case, it's more likely showing that the trend is going to continue in an upward direction. We can verify this by checking some of the examples that we have just detected using our algorithm. For example, this particular signal here showing a strong Hoffman candle. Then we have a candle closing above this particular high. However, we didn't see any increase in the ongoing uptrend. So as any other indicators, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. However, in some cases, it's more pleasant to... Um, See, like for example, this candle here was broken by this one where we had a closing price just above this particular candle. We could have had a profitable trade right here. In some other cases, it's not really as impressive as we have thought. For these signals right here, we don't have a very much of a trendy market. So the Hoffman candles are not really a good signal to follow. Anyway, for those who know the strategy you know very well that this is a strategy that helps you choose your entry point in a trendy market so when you have a sideways chart like in this case here we don't expect to have a good trading signals using the Hoffman's candles. Okay, this is all for this video. Hope you guys liked it. Stay tuned for more. We're going to try to put a strategy and to backtest this particular indicator in the next video. See you next time. Until then, trade safe.